Chapter 30 of The Exploits of Juve by Marcella Lane and Pierre Suvestra. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 30 Uncle and Nephew. So, Uncle, you have decided to live at Neuilly? Oh, it's quite settled. Your aunt finds the place charming. It would be so pleasant to have a garden. Also, the land is sure to grow more valuable in this neighborhood, and the purchase of a house here would be a good speculation. The stout man, as he uttered the word speculation, beamed. The mere sight of him suggested the small tradesman grown rich by dint of long and arduous years of toil, retired from business, and prone to fancy he was a man of genius. Compared with him, the young man he styled nephew, slim, elaborately elegant, his little mustache carefully curled, gave the impression of coming out of a draper's shop and wanting to be taken for a swell. Evidently, the nephew courted the uncle and flattered him. You are right. Land speculations are very sure and very profitable. So you wrote to the caretaker of the house to let you view it? I did, and he answered, Come today or tomorrow. I shall be at your orders. That is why I sent you word to go with me. For since you are the sole heir of my fortune... Oh, uncle, you may be sure. The Madeline tramway, where the two men were talking aloud, heeding little the amused notice of the other passengers, pulled up a moment in the Place de l'Eglise at Neuilly. Let us get down. Boulevard Inkerman begins here. With the pantings and gaspings of a man whose stoutness made all physical exercise irksome, the uncle lowered himself off the footboard of the tram. The young man sprang to his side. After five minutes' walk, the two men were in front of Lady Beltham's house, the identical house to which Juve and Fandor had previously come before to make exhaustive inquiries. "'You see, my boy,' declared the stout party, "'it is not at all a bad-looking house. Evidently it has not been lived in for a long time. Its state of outside dilapidation shows how neglected it has been, but it is possible that inside there may not be many repairs to be made. In any case, the garden is very fine.' yes the grounds are large enough and then what i like is its wonderful seclusion the wall surrounding it on all sides is very high and the entrance gate would be hard for robbers to tackle shall i ring yes ring the young man pressed the button a peal rang out in the distance presently the porter appeared he was a big fellow with long whiskers and a distinguished air the perfect type of the high-class servant you gentlemen have come to see the house exactly i am monsieur durant it is i who wrote to you to be sure sir i remember the porter showed the two visitors into the garden and forthwith the stout man drew his nephew along the paths the sense of proprietorship came over him at once he spared his relative none of the points of the property you see emile it isn't big but it still is amply sufficient no trees before the house which allows a view of the boulevard from all the windows. The servants' quarters, being in the far part of the garden, can in no way annoy the people in the house. Notice, too, that the trees are quite young and their foliage thin. I don't care for two luxuriant gardens which are apt to block the view. That's right, uncle. The porter, who was following the two, broke in upon the ecstasy of the prospective owner. Would you gentlemen like to see the house? Why, certainly, certainly. The stout man, however, before entering, was bent on going round it. He noticed the smallest details growing more and more enthusiastic. Look, Emile, it is very well built. The ground floor is sufficiently raised so as not to be too damp. This big terrace, on which the three French windows open, must be very cheerful in summer. Oh, there are drain pipes at the four corners, and we mustn't fail to see the cellars. I'm sure they are very fine bend down over the air holes what do you think of the gratings that close them and now shall we go in the porter led them to the main entrance door here is the vestibule gentlemen to the left the servants hall and kitchen to the right the dining room facing you a small drawing room then the large drawing room and lastly the double staircase leading to the first floor the stout man dropped into a chair and to whom does this place belong lady beltham sir she does not live here? Not now. At this moment she is traveling. In the wake of the porter, uncle and nephew went through the rooms on the ground floor. As happens in all untenanted houses, the damp had wrought terrible havoc. The flooring, worm-eaten, creaked under their feet. 
the carpets had large damp spots on them the paper hung loose on the walls while the furniture was covered with a thick coat of dust don't pay any attention to the furniture emil it matters little what we must first look at is the arrangement of the rooms why there are iron shutters i like that to be sure uncle they're very practical yes yes to begin with when those shutters are closed it would be impossible from the outside to see anything in the rooms not even the least light the porter proceeded to show them the first floor of the house there is only one staircase asked the stout man yes only one and what is the cause of the unusual dampness we are far from the seine the garden is not very leafy there is a leaky cistern in the cellar sir here is the largest bedroom it was my lady's yes one sees it has been the last room to be lived in at this harmless remark the porter seemed very upset what makes you think that sir why the chairs are pushed about as though recently used there is much less dust on the furniture and there's a print look at the desk there's a trace of dust on the diary the blotting paper has been moved lately someone has been writing there why what's wrong with you as he listened to the stout man's remarks the porter grew strangely pale oh he stammered it's nothing nothing at all one would say you were afraid afraid no sir i am not afraid only only what well gentlemen it is best not to stay here lady beltham is selling the house because it is haunted neither of the visitors seemed impressed by the statement of their guide the elder laughed a jolly laugh are there ghosts why sir spirits come here have you seen them oh certainly not sir when they are there i shut myself up in the lodge i can assure you when do they appear they come almost always on tuesday nights and warming to his subject the porter gave details he got the impression first on one occasion when her ladyship was absent she had left some days before for italy it was sunday and then during tuesday night while walking in the garden he heard movements inside the house i went to fetch my keys and when i came back i found nobody i thought at first it was burglars but i saw nothing that had been taken away yet i was not mistaken furniture had been moved there were breadcrumbs on the floor the young man roared with laughter breadcrumbs then your spirits come and sup here the uncle equally amused asked and what did lady beltham think when you told her that lady beltham laughed at me but sir i had my own ideas i watched in the garden daily and i heard the same sounds as always on tuesday nights at last i laid a trap i put a chalk mark round the chairs in lady beltham's room she being still away well sir when i came to the house again on thursday the chairs had been moved i told lady beltham and this time she seemed very much frightened it is since then she made up her mind to sell the house for all that what makes you say they are spirits what else could it be sir i also heard the sounds of chains jangling one night i even heard a strange and terrible hiss well cried the stout man beginning to go down the staircase since the house is haunted i shall have to pay less for it eh emile you will buy it sir in spite of that to be sure your phantoms alarm me less than the damp oh the damp that can be easily remedied you will see that we have had a central heating stove installed the porter led his visitors down a narrow stair to the cellars take care gentlemen the stairs are slippery then he observed you don't need a candle the gratings are big enough to give plenty of light what is that asked the young man pointing to a huge iron cylinder embedded in the earth and rising some four and a half feet above the floor the cistern of which i spoke as you can see for yourselves it is but half full the porter hurried them on that is the heating stove there are conductors throughout the house when it is in full blast the house is even too warm but your great stove is in pieces objected the stout man pointing with his stick to iron plates torn out of one side of the central furnace oh sir that happened at the time of the floods but it won't cost much to put it right if you gentlemen will examine the inside of the apparatus you will see that the pipes are in perfect order the uncle followed the porter's suggestion your pipes are as big as chimneys a man could pass through them the inspection ended 
uncle and nephew bestowed a liberal tip on their guide they would think it over and write or come again soon the two relatives retraced their steps to boulevard inkerman fandor juve we have got them uncle and nephew that is to say juve and fandor could talk quite freely now juve are you certain that we have got them juve pushed his friend into a wine shop and ordered drinks then he drew from his pocket a piece of paper quite blank what is that a piece of paper i picked up on lady beltham's desk while the porter's back was turned it will serve for a little experiment if it is not long since a hand rested on it we shall find the print on this blank paper yes fandor look juve drew a pencil from his pocket and scratched off a fine dust of graphite which he shook over the paper gradually the outline of a hand appeared faint but quite visible that is how resumed juve with this very simple process you can decipher the fingerprints of persons who have written or rested their hands on anything paper glass even wood according to the clearness of this outline which is thrown up by the coagulation of the plumbago thanks to the ordinary moisture of the hand which was laid on the paper i can assure you that someone wrote on lady beltham's desk about ten days ago it is wonderful said fandor here then is proof positive that her ladyship visits her house from time to time correct or at least that someone goes there for that is a man's hand well what are you going to do now juve now i'm off to the prefecture to get rid of my false embonment which bothers me no end i have never been so glad that i am not naturally stout fandor laughed and i own to you that i shan't be sorry to get rid of my false mustache all the while i was inspecting that cursed house this mustache kept tickling my nose and making me want to sneeze you should have done so but suppose my mustache had come off end of chapter thirty